Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. I know it's hard out there if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease or just as bad if you have a loved one, a dear one, who's dealing with a chronic, long-term, progressive illness. It can be terrible. It can be tragic. But folks, please understand, it is in the body's nature to heal. And I, when I tell you these things, I'm telling you from my own personal experience. I have seen the reversals. This is why I do this program. It may seem unusual or miraculous or amazing to the uninitiated, but if you're a healthcare professional and you've witnessed these kinds of reversals, please understand it is in the body's nature to heal from autoimmunity and skin diseases and health challenges of the progress of a progressive nature, whatever they may be. Let us help you. 844-236-6010 if you or a loved one is dealing with a chronic long-term health challenge. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. And of course, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or join me in my mission to educate the world about how powerful and important and effective a good nutritional supplement program can be, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team, 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business and help change the world, help improve lives at the most fundamental level, which is what health is about, the most fundamental level of our existence. Nothing is more important than good health. And you can make a difference in people's lives and make money at the same time. For a one-time $25 fee, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. You can also head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and sign up or purchase products right off the websites. Criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com have blog posts. And there's also lots of really neat videos at criticalhealthnews.com. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, Truth treatments.com okay so last we spoke we're talking about brain diseases specifically parkinson's and alzheimer's which i consider to be basically the same kind of disease well all degenerative diseases really the same disease it's only one disease mbf uh, mbfd disease my body is falling apart disease that's the only disease there is and it doesn't matter where it's showing up that's a hallmark fundamental principle of the bright side philosophy I have a personal connection to Alzheimer's disease, a, a, a type of dementia or cognitive breakdown, impaired thinking, impaired memory, or sometimes erratic or delusional behavior, sometimes even psychotic behavior. My grandfather uh, got Alzheimer's disease, and uh, my dad sort of dealing with it. My mom is terrified of getting it. Parkinson's disease is Alzheimer's disease that occurs in a different part of the brain. That's all it is. It's the same idea. From a degenerative standpoint, these are all the same thing. That means in addition to eliminating the crappy food, reducing your calories, and getting on a good nutritional supplement program, you can reverse these things. Reverse them. Slow down their progression at the very least, but you can reverse these things. And I've seen it. Vitamin E, the B-complex, essential fatty acids, vitamin A, 
the list of nutrients that can be helpful for, uh, for neurodegenerative diseases, degenerative diseases of the brain and the central nervous system, whether we're talking Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, or for that matter, whether we're talking arthritis or cancer or any degenerative diseases, the list of nutritional supplements that can be beneficial is nearly endless. Zinc is important, magnesium is important, selenium is important, and non-nutritional supplements like pregnenolone and DHEA and progesterone, these are all critically, critically important for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease and for all degenerative diseases. But for today, we're talking Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, DHEA and progesterone and pregnenolone, these have calming effects. Improving circulation, exercising, moving the body, improving the, uh, the movement of blood throughout the body. And of course, as we talked yesterday, or in our last program, lecithin, which is a key component of nerve cells and an invaluable supplement for all neurodegenerative diseases. Same with heart disease. Lecithin is an important component of bile. And bile is important for heart health. And there's a major relationship between the digestive system and the heart, and between the digestive system and the brain. In terms of heart health, bile is fundamental when it comes to how the body clears out cholesterol, how the body absorbs heart-friendly nutrients like vitamin A and vitamin E and vitamin D and omega fatty acids. And bile is very, very important for helping improve the activity of probiotics, good bacteria. It all works together here, you guys. And if you want to do one thing for all of these systems, focus on your digestive system. Lecithin also plays an important role in helping improve heart health. It helps remove cholesterol from the blood. Lecithin is part of an enzyme system that's involved in HDL cholesterol and have, uh, improving or upregulating or stimulating H, uh, cholesterol uptake into HDL. So lecithin has an artery clearing effect. It's like a uh, non, well, functionally anyway, it's like a non-toxic statin drug. It increases the effects, the functionality of HDL cholesterol. If not the total amount of it, it improves the functionality of HDL. And the more fatty foods you're eating, the more lecithin you need. This is where the ketogenic diet, which is a high-fat diet, this is where the ketogenic diet comes in. We've been talking about lecithin, and we've been talking about bile, and we've been talking about brain health, but really this is all about the ketogenic diet. If you're going ketogenic, which I recommend everybody does, really, but especially if you're dealing with brain health issues, Alzheimer's disease, seizure disorders, if you want to go ketogenic, high fat, moderate protein, low carb, or even if you're just thinking of increasing the amount of eggs you eat, and I know a lot of you guys are eating a lot of eggs. I talk to people who are eating a dozen eggs a day. Now, I don't know how great that an idea that is, but you know, eggs are good stuff. Eggs have all kinds of great nutrients in them. But if you're going to eat more eggs, or if you're going to eat more coconut oil, or even if you're going to eat more avocado, if you're just going to up your fat intake in any way, you want to be, there's supplements that you want to start to include into your diet to help protect you from some of the problems associated with high fats. High fats are energy. You need to make sure your fats are stable. Lecithin, for example, improves the ability of the body to process fat. So if you're going high fat, if you're going ketogenic, up your lecithin. Remember, there's two kinds of chemicals. There's two kinds of biochemicals in the world of biology. There's two classes of nutrients. You got your water-soluble ones. That's the B vitamins, the electric, electrolytes, potassium and calcium and sodium, chloride and vitamin C and some of the amino acids. And then there's the fatty nutrients. It's the fatty nutrients that you got to really pay close attention to. The water-soluble nutrients, those get flushed out of the body. But the fatty nutrients, you got to really pay close attention to them. you got to take care of how you, you got to help your body process these fatty nutrients. you got to protect yourself from these fatty nutrients. And lecithin is one major supplement that you want to start to include in your supplement program if you're going to, if you're going to go high fat. You can get lecithin in foods. Eggs are a good source of lecithin. Organ meats, liver is a good source of lecithin. There's some lecithin in soy. There's some lecithin in seeds, avocado, wheat germ. There's lecithin pretty much everywhere, but you're not going to get significant amounts of lecithin. There's lecithin, by the way, in cabbage, which is kind of interesting. Lecithin's everywhere. All cells have lecithin, but you're not going to really get the high quantities, the good amounts of lecithin, unless you supplement with lecithin. And there's a few different ways that you can supplement with lecithin if you decide that it's important if you're going ketogenic. Now you want to increase the amount of lecithin that you're using. Probably a good idea to use supplemental lecithin. We'll tell you about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7, on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. If you miss a program, they're all reviewable. If you want to direct somebody to a specific program, you can search both of uh, both those websites, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel or our Vitamin C Loaded Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Omega-6 Healing Cream, head over to truthtreatments.com. If you want one product, I know there's four products up there, and sometimes people ask me, what's the one product I should start with? Start off with Truth Serum. It's made with nearly uh, 80% of a premium, high-powered, fat-soluble form of vitamin C in addition to cholesterol and a couple of anti-inflammatory substances. And uh, that's pretty much some fullerenes and some esters, chemical esters, that fatty acid esters that help improve penetration. And that's it, folks. No preservative, no fragrance, no oil, no silicon. Never in any of our Truth Skin Health products will you get anything that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. And you can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, our number today, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. Please try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or ingredients or skin health issues, if you have a comment about the truth treatment products or if you have questions about our truth skin health products, you can uh, give us a shout, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. All right, so if you're going ketogenic, you decide, and I recommend, at least for a little bit, everybody goes ketogenic. It's the diet we talk about here on the bright side, I like to think of as a modified ketogenic diet. It's not as dramatic as the ketogenic diet, which is around 60 or 70 or even up to 90% fat. But a modified ketogenic diet is where you're maybe 40%, 50% fat, maybe uh, 10, 20, 25% carbohydrates, and then maybe 10 or uh, probably about 20%, 20 to 25% protein. I call that a modified ketogenic diet. Not as dramatic as the standard one. But either way, whatever you decide to do, if you're going to increase the amount of fats in your diet, there's supplements that you're going to want to start to take. And we're going to talk about a few of these for the next few days. One of them is lecithin. Lecithin, it helps the body process fats. It's a component of bile. It stabilizes the electrical energy as it's flowing through the nerve cells, which makes it important for the brain or for nervous, disorder, nervous system disorders. There's different ways that you can get lecithin. There's food sources of lecithin, of course, and eggs are probably the best food source of lecithin. Soy also is a good source, as are organ meats. But lecithin, even though it is found in pretty much all foods, it's not really found in, in high quantities in all foods. So you're going to want to use supplemental lecithin if you're going ketogenic or you're going high fat. And there's different ways to get supplemental lecithin. You've got liquid lecithin. You've got capsulated lecithin, which is liquid in capsules. And then you've got the granules. The straight lecithin liquid, is that seems to be the one most people are using. I'm not a big fan of the straight liquid lecithin, which is dissolved in soy oil. Soy is, of course, the major source of supplemental lecithin. So uh, lecithin oil, they call it, or lecithin liquid is lecithin dissolved in soy oil. You don't really know how much lecithin you're getting. It's the problem. It's basically lecithin dissolved in oil. So you, you may be getting mostly oil and not a lot of lecithin. It's also really sticky, really messy, really smelly, and really difficult to work with. I'm not a fan, suffice it to say. Now, you can also find lecithin liquid in a sunflower form. Most lecithin is going to be in soy, but there's also sunflower lecithin. My friend Mary, hi Mary, if you're listening, she sent me an email a couple days ago about uh, the company NOW, Now, which I, I use a lot of Now products. Now is kind of a whole, it's kind of a distributing company. They don't really make anything, they just package things. In any case, there is a Now sunflower oil. There's a, there's a few sunflower oils, but I haven't seen any sunflower oils in capsules. Sunflower oil typically, I'm sorry lecithin sunflower, sunflower lecithin in capsules. But it's still sticky. It's still smelly. You're not going to have to deal with the soy problem, but uh, you'll still have to deal with the stickiness and the messiness of sunflower lecithin when you use sunflower lecithin. You can, of course, use capsules. I haven't seen sunflower capsules. I've seen soy in capsules, and the capsules are much easier to use. But they're still going to be dissolved in soy oil. They're not going to be as messy, of course, um, but they're going to be a little bit pricier. They're not quite as economical. A third way, which is the way I use my lecithin, is in granules, or they call it powdered lecithin, but it's really granular lecithin, which is basically lecithin oil without the oil. 
they take they remove the oil it's like a concentrated form of lecithin so you get more lecithin bang for your buck with the granules it's not sticky it's not stinky it is a little pricier not even that much pricier i think it's like i buy mine for like 13 bucks for a pound of it it's pretty inexpensive stuff it doesn't dissolve very well the oil will dissolve so you know you can stir it into your smoothie or you can you know it's easier to use the oil but the granules are perfect for smoothies where you're blending it up real well. So if you're making smoothies and you want to add lecithin to your smoothie, remember we talked about how lecithin makes things nice and creamy, brings the oil and water together in your smoothie. It's an emulsifier for your smoothie. Uh, lecithin granules really work well when you're blending things. If you're trying to stir them in water, that's not going to happen. If you try to put some lecithin granules in water, that's not going to really work. You can, If you have enough heat, you can probably melt your granules into some kind of oil. But really, I reserve the granules for smoothies. Personally, so you got three ways of, of upping, of increasing the amount of lecithin or getting lecithin into your supplement program: the oil, sticky, smelly, messy. Uh, use sunflower oil if you're going to use the oil, lecithin oil. Uh, there is also the, the capsules, not sticky, not smelly, but kind of pricey, relatively pricey. Those, that's the most expensive way. And then there's the granules, which work well in smoothies, and uh, not that expensive really either. Another important supplement that you're going to want to use when you start going ketogenic is vitamin E. Love this stuff. Very underappreciated vitamin. In fact, up until the 1990s, doctors were telling you you didn't even need any vitamin E. It wasn't even considered, it was, they probably knew it was essential nutrient, but they didn't really think it was that important. Around the 1990s, it started to become popular. I remember in pharmacy school, they used to tell us that you didn't need any extra vitamin E. But then around the 1990s, it became very obvious that vitamin E plays a critical role in health. Not only that, but supplementing with vitamin E can be really, really beneficial for a lot of different things. Vitamin E is a fat protector. So when you're going ketogenic, got more fat, you're eating more fat, vitamin E acts to protect that fat. It protects the fats in the body, too. It protects fats in food. It protects fats in the body. You'll always see vitamin E with, omega, uh, uh, with quality omega fatty acid capsules. If you're going to supplement with omega fats, you probably want to make sure you're using enough vitamin E. If you're going ketogenic, you got to make sure you're using enough vitamin E. Vitamin E protects all the cells of the body, but it's especially important for brain cells. It's especially important for really all nervous, systems, nervous system cells, all neurons, all nerve cells, which are extra dependent on fat. In fact, I would go as far as to say that vitamin E is the most, if not... It's at least one of the most, but it may even be the most important vitamin when it comes to the health of the brain. Vitamin E has a calming effect on the body. It has a stabilizing effect on the body. It prevents inflammation. It prevents excessive excitation and excitotoxicity. And it also, very interestingly, which we'll talk about here later on, has a, a protective effect against excess estrogen, estrogen, which is a exciting hormone. Uh, estrogen is a amping up hormone, or hormone, yes. It has a, 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 a antagonistic effect to the calming benefits of progesterone. All of this makes vitamin E the perfect associate for the ketogenic diet which is also a kind of calming and stabilizing uh, a protocol, particularly on excessive excitation of the brain. Alzheimer's disease is the manifestation of an excess. Very interesting, because the drugs that we use for Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, which are notoriously ineffective. All right, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us, folks. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. If you're on hold, hang tight. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010. From the Endocrine Society's 98th annual meeting in Boston, some sunscreen ingredients may disrupt sperm cell function. How do you like that? Many ultraviolet filtering chemicals, commonly used in sunscreens, interfere with the function of human sperm cells. Well, guess what, folks? That is not a surprise. Sunscreen ingredients are cytotoxic, which means cell toxic. Sperm cells are cells. Sunscreens kill cells, period. End of story. Yes, I know. They're only, well, we only put 0.1% of the sunscreen. We only use 2%, and we know that it takes 10% or 15% to kill cells. No, it doesn't. If something is killing your cells, if something is toxic enough to kill your cells, why would we put it on our skin? Ask doctor dermatologists that. 
yes, I know, it filters out the sun. Great. There's other ways to filter out the sun. Do you need a sunscreen sometimes? Well, if you're going to burn, maybe. But get it off your skin as soon as you don't need it anymore. They kill things, period. There's no argument there. They'll tell you, well, it takes a lot to do it, or, oh, we've done tests, and we know that it's generally recognized as safe, blah, blah, blah. No, they kill things. In this case, sunscreen ingredients disrupt sperm cell function, which basically means they kill them. And we're talking about eight of the 13, this is the ones they tested anyway, eight of the 13 UV filters, uh, eight of the 13 UV filters that we use demonstrated this uh, sperm cell effect. And they're the most common ones. The most common one is octomethoxycinamate, and it is not a nice chemical at all. Octosalicylate, octocrylene, oxybenzone, patamate O. You'll see all these on the back of your sunscreen, uh, sunscreen uh, package on the ingredient deck. You've got to be an ingredient deck, readers, uh, in re uh, ingredient deck reader if you're going to understand how to leverage or take advantage or protect yourself from, uh, from these nasty chemicals that they put in, uh, in these skin products. There's no way a preservative, by the way, or a perfume cannot have a negative effect on the skin, especially if you're doing it over and over again, like most of us are using these products. Sunscreens, yes, they're problematic, but just the plain old preservative is problematic. That's why I came up with my truth treatment products. No preservatives, no emulsifiers, no perfumes, no waxes, no nothing that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com if you want to learn more. Okay, so tomorrow we'll continue talking about calming the body down using the ketogenic diet and using vitamin E and what exactly calming the body and calming cells down, why is that so darn important and the relationship of disease to hyperactivity. Even if our diseases show up as an ultimate slowing down of the body, an ultimate kind of stagnation in the body, it starts off with hyperactivity of the cells. And this is what all degenerative diseases have in common. Cells are cranking things out. Too much of stuff. Too much fibers. Too much fluid. Too, much, uh, too many inflammatory factors. So calming things down at the cell level is extremely important. And this is where vitamin E comes in. This is where the ketogenic diet comes in. And this is where nutritional supplementation comes in in general. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking the ketogenic diet, supplements you can use for the ketogenic diet on the bright side. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Socrates in New Hampshire. What's up, Socrates? How you doing, buddy? Doing great, Ben. I was just curious about your opinion on these precursors to L-DOPA, meaning the difference between tyrosine and DL-phenylalanine, and which would be superior on a long-term basis? Okay. okay, that's three three questions there. So the, the precursors that they give, they call these... Uh, Secrete agogs, that's the technical name, secrete agogs. They improve secretion of neurotransmitters or hormones sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't, the body has so many feedback control mechanisms, safety valves, that I don't think precursors, using precursors, is necessarily a great strategy if you want to get quick results. It's a good long term strategy, maybe. But in the short run, your body has so many control features to prevent the to prevent the production of things from raw materials so you'll take your for example just to give you a quick example some people take arginine as a precursor to growth hormone well the problem with using arginine as a precursor to growth hormone is just because you take the arginine doesn't mean the cells are going to make growth hormone they'll be like right. well do we need growth hormone or don't we need you know it'll decide whether we need growth hormone or not or whether there's something stopping the production of growth hormone and you'll take the arginine you won't get any benefits although it's a good nutritional supplement. Likewise with tyrosine and phenylalanine for DOPA. Uh, tyrosine doesn't automatically get turned into dopamine. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just because right. you take the tyrosine doesn't mean you're just gonna, your brain's going to just turn it into dopamine, even though, yes, it's true that tyrosine is a precursor. Uh, but on the other hand, tyrosine and phenylalanine both have some really neat effects for amping things up. They're both like speed, basically, and they also have nice antidepressant properties. I, I was taking tyrosine for a while, but I found it was too, too powerful for me, so I couldn't take it. It made me jittery. On the other hand, if, you, if you're low tyrosine or if you uh, have issues with depression or perhaps uh, uh, or, uh, if you're eating too much food, tyrosine has an anti, anti, anti or appetite suppressant effect in addition to having an antidepressant effect. It also can be helpful for thyroid. If you're low tyrosine, low thyroid, if you're eating a lot of food, if you have a tendency to be depressed, tyrosine can be very helpful. As far as the difference between the two, um, slight, there isn't much. I think uh, 
I think it's uh, one is derived from the other. I'm pretty sure tyrosine is der derived from uh, a phenylalanine, but I think it might be the other way around. But one is derived from the other. There's not that much difference between the two. You'll get a little bit more of a buzz, in my experience anyway, from tyrosine than from phenylalanine, but it's six of one, half dozen of the other, really, as far as uh, what you're going to supplement with. Did I answer your questions there, Socrates? Yeah, just on, just on one additional thing. But there was, a, I guess, speculation that you could, you could get a, quote, um, what do they say, building an immunity? What's the, uh, well, I guess there was a drug to taking too much tyrosine. Is that true? I forget what the term is. Well, is I don't think it's, you can get, uh, what, what did you say now? It, like, uh, you can get immunity, tolerance. like it won't work as tolerance. well is what you're saying? Tolerance is the term. Tolerance. For. No, it's not that you'll get tolerance for it as much as you'll meet your, your body will, uh, will get enough tyrosine in it, and any more that you take, your body won't use because your tyrosine exactly. levels will be, you know what I'm saying? You'll have That's enough right. tyrosine so your body won't use it. It'll excrete it. It's, uh, tyrosine isn't really stored that well. is isn't stored as effectively as some okay. amino acids. So, uh, no, uh, f uh, by the way, it's, it's tyrosine is derived from phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid. That's the difference between the two. So if you've got to pick one or the other, phenylalanine is, a, is essential. Your body can make tyrosine from phenylalanine. Makes sense. All right. Thanks so much, Ben. Okay, Socrates. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see if we get uh, one more in before our break here. Sheila, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, yes, um, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I had been looking at your longevity products. Okay. And um, the weight loss system that was advertised had a disclaimer that there were ingredients that uh, California had outlawed or something. And yeah, I you want, just that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, it's not just the weight loss; it's all the products, really. Uh, California has some laws about what you can, how you label things, and it's only California that has those laws. Um, and if, I, I'm not even sure how they came up with them, but the disclaimer involves. Uh, Doesn't what, what is the disclaimer? Well, uh, hang on, Sheila. We'll finish up. We, we got to take a break, but that's a very important okay. question. Um, yep. We'll we'll cover that when we come back from break. I get a lot of questions about that. I think it was Proposition 19. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. We are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Sheila in... Uh, where is Sheila here? Do we have Sheila? Sheila in uh, Massachusetts. Hey, Sheila. Sheila, Sheila. Yeah. You have Sheila? Are you there? Yep. Okay, good. So, so yep. Prop 65. Prop 65, I said Prop 19, it's actually Prop 65, is a, is a California law. It's a California proposition. Uh, it's a state law. And because uh, we want to sell, Longevity wants to sell their products in, uh, in California, anything that has, possibly has one of, uh, at least one of a list of 800 different chemicals that the state of California considers to be toxic, to, considers to be uh, either cancer-causing or, or birth defect-causing. Uh, and there's 800 of these different chemicals, and they include things like wood dust and, and selenium and alcohol. Uh, yes, the kind of alcohol we drink. Uh, yeah. Alcohol drank in excess. You have to label. I don't know how they determine if you're drinking in excess, but anyway, you have to label it according to this Proposition 65. You have to label your products as such, as cont possibly containing these things. It's all legal ease. That's why we put it on all the products. I say we, but it's Longevity. That's why Longevity puts it on all their, uh, on all their products, I'm pretty sure. But at least the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, I've got to check. Uh, but at least the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Much ado about nothing, in my humble opinion. It's just a way of legally protecting us, protecting the company. Um, but you're going to have to make your own decision on that. If you're interested in uh, getting a list of the, of the items on Prop 65, you can uh, get it online. Uh, they change, I think they update it every year. Uh, and mostly it's, it's pretty toxic stuff that's on the list, but there are things like selenium and, and alcohol, and, and I saw wood dust and a couple other things. There's, a lot of drugs are on this list too, by the way. Um, but you're going to have to make, ultimately you're going to have to make your own decision on that. I think personally, I think it's much ado about nothing. Uh, if things were indeed cancer causing, they wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to use them. There's a list, there's a list that the FDA comes up with that, ha, that's, uh, that contains all the things you're allowed to use. This is just the state of California. 
that has this. Does that make sense? Did I explain that okay? Yeah, I, I assumed that was so, but I, I did want to check with you before I placed an order. Yeah, when, you think, when you think about it, how would we, If and I get this question a lot, that's why I think it's important, that's why I wanted to spend some time with it. You know, we get this question all the time. Oh, this causes cancer. Why is it in the product? Oh, what's, what's Prop 65? Why do you have to put this warning on, on the bottle? Look, if we were selling something, why do, you, do we need to sell something that causes cancer? Does longevity, we're dedicated to helping people with their health. I'm not going to sell you something that causes cancer. That's even right. silly to even contemplate when you think about it. I got a letter from a lady. She says to me, uh, she writes, uh, why is there boron in your product? Boron causes cancer. Listen, first of all, let's be clear here. There aren't things that cause cancer. That's not how cancer happens. We have this very silly, simplistic idea about cancer. Cancer is the result of a cell that is not doing its business correctly. Specifically, it's suffocating. It's not getting enough oxygen. Dr. Otto Warburg showed this 100 years ago or close to 100 years ago. A cancer cell is a cell that's not getting oxygen. It's not like you put a chemical in a cell and boom, the cell goes cancerous. That's not what happens. Things don't cause cancer like this. Cancer is the net result of cells that are not processing energy correctly. It's not like things cause cancer. By the way, salted fish, Chinese style, is on the Prop 65 list. So that's the kind of stuff that's there. So uh, what I'm saying is you don't want to get this idea that this causes cancer. We read this all the time. That causes cancer. That's not how cancer happens. Cancer happens because of over the long term, a cell is not processing its energy correctly. It's not utilizing oxygen correctly. Basically, it's suffocating. It's an electrical phenomenon. It's not a chemical phenomenon. It's like all diseases, it's electrical. That means you can protect yourself from cancer. And that's how we should, what we should be doing is by using nutritional supplements correctly, by making sure we're calming the body down, which we'll talk about tomorrow, making sure that you're uh, not putting stuff in the body that creates a burden on the body, that creates more work for cells to do. That's how you deal with cancer. Not trying to run away and stay away from any of the zillions and zillions and zillions of chemicals that they say cause cancer. Okay, I got to motivate. I hope I helped you. you out there, Sheila. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go to Kevin in Moscow. What's up? Previt, Kevin. Hey, Ben. Um, What's up? A couple you weeks doing? back, you started speaking about uh, water filter, and okay. you said your preference is for distilled water. That's my preference. Now, I was wondering, do you make the distilled water? I do don't. Buy Somebody, I buy it. Some, I, don't, I don't have time to distill it. Although there's distiller, you can buy distillers. Yeah, That's I know sure. about that. They're, yeah, they're a little I bit don't. expensive. Yeah, they're cost, a gallon of distilled water costs a dollar or a dollar fifty. Yeah, you know, but so. uh, don't you worry about not having the minerals? No. I get my minerals. Oh. You don't get minerals from water unless you're drinking spring water. Mineral water, mineralized water, you know, basically spring water. That's not where you well, get minerals from. State, I did have, uh, I used to go to a spring in... Yeah, uh, that's the best problem. It, yeah, it you know, I say distill... I'm sorry, I say distill water is the best, Kevin. But really, yeah. yeah, living by a spring is the best, absolutely. But for most now, of us who I, don't live by springs, distilled water is the best. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I don't live near a spring now, you know that. No. Um, I have um, a Pro-Pure um, Traveler. You know, with the G2.0, and I absolutely love it. And it's a distill? It distills or reverse osmosis? No, 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 no. It's um, kind of like um, uh, the Berkey filter system. You know, I don't know how that Berkey filter works. I think it's just like a mechanical filter, right? No, it's gravity. It's gravity. Oh, it's gravity filter. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, there's different um, ways. I don't know that the Berkey, and I may be wrong on this. I, I have to, should probably research it. Does the Berkey get rid of fluoride and chlorine and that stuff? Uh, it depends if you get the um, the best filter. Now, with the uh, ProPure, they have the 2.0 that does. Well, here's it the gets... problem with the filters, as I see it. How do you know when the filter's starting to get weak? Is there a way to um, know? Well, the the lifetime is you should keep uh, you know a mental note of how much it yeah, has but, a service life. And but it's gradual, though. Here's the problem. Take it out and clean it. But here's the they problem, give you Kevin. A sponge. And you have to clean it out. Here's Definitely. the problem. Kevin, here's the problem. It's gradual. So you're not going to know when a little bit of fluoride's getting through or a little bit of chlorine's getting through. You know what I'm saying? You may say you clean it every two months or whatever. But what happens like a month and a half into it? It's starting to lose its filtering power, no? I mean, it's just common no, sense. No, I, I, these are, these, I've been using it. I'm in my third year. But you don't know, though. You don't know where the cutoff point where it's starting to become weak is. That's the problem, as I see it, with the water filters. It's not like it hits a switch and all uh, I, of a sudden... I actually take it out, and I physically inspect it, 
I would suggest that you take a little time to look at them. You can't on, physically uh, expect, you can't, Some of Kevin, them look like after two months, they look like they were soaking in motor oil. Kevin, listen, that's the big particles, but you can't visually inspect for fluoride. You can't visually expect for chlorine. You can't visually inspect for the drugs. Anyway, it seems to me like it's going to be, it's on a continuum. It's not like a cutoff point yeah. where all of a sudden it loses its filtering power. It's gradual. And you're not going to know where that gradual, graduality begins. And that's why, personally, I use bottled water. However, I, I, I'm not, you know, I see you can get some benefit probably from the Berkey or from a good water filter. I do go by, there's another thing. I go by taste sometimes. A friend of mine bought me yeah. a Brita water filter. And I don't really use it because when I drink the water from the Brita, it doesn't taste as clean as my distilled water. So I know something's getting through. Yeah. Now, well, the, the Brita only makes bad water taste better. Supposedly, but I could still taste yeah. the difference. All right, I got to move, Kevin. Thank you so much for pointing I, I that out. I just want to touch base on you with one other thing very sure. quickly. Uh, sure. They have the longevity here in Russia, but um, they had the BTT, and it was for crazy price. Um, I think some of the, somebody on your side should uh, look into them. Because How much was it? They're representing everything as well as they should. How much was it out there, just for curiosity? Um, it was more than double. So it was, okay. at the time with the conversion, it was about $118. Wow. For, you know, the, wow. The 2 okay. you know, the new Pete one. Okay. And I was I, I, up. Hey, Kevin, I want to get one more call in, my friend. Okay. Sure. Thank Take you, care, Kevin. Man. Take love care, you. buddy. Good to talk to you. All right, RC, man, what's going on? Hey Ben, good morning. Hey, I, hey, I good found morning. a, I found a sunflower lecithin powder. You did? Was it N O W? Yeah. Is it now? No. I, okay. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, and it's great. Is it non-GMO? Yes. And organic. It's all. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How much was it, RC? Uh, well, for what I remember, it wasn't that much. More than uh, than the soy uh, lecithin. Good deal. Okay, well, that's good to know. I hadn't seen that yet. I, I've seen the liquid one, but I hadn't seen the, the powder. Thank you yeah, for bringing that up. I tried the liquid one once, and God, I felt like I was sticky, and it was a mess. Isn't it a mess? Yeah, it's a pain to work with. But, it, I mean, yeah. you know, it, I think it's a, a little bit more, it's cheaper. You just don't know how much lecithin you're getting is the problem with the liquid or the slash. They yeah, call it lecithin oil. All right, RC, that's, that's the music, my friend. Got it. Great. All right, Dan, have Thank a you, good buddy. Day. Good to talk to you, man. Yeah. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, we'll talk about vitamin E and also about the general idea of how disease begins. You know, we get this idea that disease is about stagnation, and in a way it is, but in the sh at the very microscopic level, it's actually excitation that leads to degeneration, a accelerated aging, and ultimately to disease. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about vitamin E and the ketogenic diet and nutrients that you can use to support ketogenesis. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a beautiful, spectacular, wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.